Jones. We start with question number one from Mike Rumbles. Um, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the impact of shutting down the 40s pipeline running through Aberdeenshire. Minister Paul Wheelhouse. Uh, the Scottish Government is liaising with INEOS, uh, FPS, Petro INEOS, UK Government, SEPA and local resilience partners to monitor this evolving situation. The interests of the public safety, worker safety, the well-being of the local communities affected and the environment are all key priorities. However, by way of background, Presiding Officer, a crack was discovered on the 6th of December 2017 in the 40s pipeline near Netherley to the northwest of Stonehaven during routine maintenance. The crack has extended, requiring the 40s pipeline system which carries production from more than 80 fields in the central and southern North Sea to be shut down to allow for safe repair. A technical assessment is underway to inform the repairs that will be required and the likely duration of the shutdown. There are no plans to shut down Grangemouth Refinery and no impacts are anticipated for fuel and gas supplies. There are sufficient stocks of crude oil to continue operations in the refinery for more than a week uh, and Petrionios are also developing contingency plans to import alternative supplies of crude oil uh, should this become necessary to ensure continued operation. In addition, they're also able to import additional finished products to ensure there are no impacts on fuel supplies. We are very aware that uh, an extended shutdown will have an impact on companies with fields utilising the 40s export route and we are uh, seeking clarity from INEOS on the risks of this being necessary. In ad advance of details emerging on the timescales for returning the pipeline to normal operations, Scottish Government officials remain in close contact with INEOS, FPS and Oil and Gas UK uh, to monitor the impacts on the oil and gas sector and the wider economy. Mike Rumbles. I uh, thank the Minister for that update, but <clears throat> the Minister will be aware that people living along the length of this pipeline, especially in Aberdeenshire, are worried that there may be further, as yet undetected, fractures. What can the Scottish Government do to reassure local residents about this? Minister. I, I cl clearly, it's, it's something which has occurred in terms of the, the, um, the discussions we've had, so there's some thinking we've had ourselves around making sure that we can give confidence to communities along the route that no similar problems may arise elsewhere. It's obviously very early in the process. We'll be seeking information from INEOS as uh, to reassurances around whether this is related to a technical failure of a part of the pipeline or whether it's an indication of any further impacts that may be elsewhere on the, on the line. It's not possible at this stage to, to give any clarity on those points, but it's clearly something that has been raised by the uh, Scottish Government with, with INEOS and we'll seek uh, further clarity on that. What I would say is that this is um, a, a fault that's been identified during routine maintenance. Routine maintenance happens all the time on, on the pipeline and that hopefully will give confidence to the public that um, a breach has been discovered before it became a significant issue and uh, hopefully that will give comments to communities that are affected that uh, safety measures are in place uh, to protect them from uh, incidents such as this taking impact on their lives. And Mike Rumbles. Yeah. <clears throat> Considering that um, the 40s oil pipeline is a critical part of the UK's energy infrastructure and it's quite an old pipeline, what does the Minister think are the implications for oil workers affected by the temporary closure, which, as I understand, Ineos have just been telling me that uh, is understand to be uh, the delay is going to be weeks rather than days. What can the Scottish Government do to help those employees uh, and their families? Minister. Uh, clearly in my original answer I recognise that this is potential uh, for an extended shutdown to have an impact on those companies that are currently uh, both using the 40s pipeline in terms of uh, production upstream companies that are relying on that pipeline to, to get their product to market but also on those who are supporting that work uh, through whether it's through service companies or other supply chain companies to actually um, have an impact on, on their livelihoods. So we are trying to get information from Oil and Gas UK who are doing a, a ring round to try and speak to all the different businesses that are affected. Uh, I'm not at liberty to, to discuss openly those co companies, that specific companies that are affected by existing shutdowns at this point in time, uh, but to make the uh, member aware that we are having dialogue with Oil and Gas UK and indeed uh, any of us on these matters. And we'll be seeking as a high priority to make sure we protect the interests of those supply chain companies which may have cash flow difficulties if they are not able to conduct the work that they have been uh, contracted to do at this point in time. Angus MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. Co uh, coincidentally, I spent the whole of yesterday morning meeting with seniors, uh, senior Ineos management in Grangemouth, at which the Forties pipeline uh, was discussed amongst other issues. And I was encouraged by the action uh, taken by Ineos to safeguard the environment following the identified crack in the pipeline. Can I ask the Minister if he's received any further assurances from Ineos with regard to production at Grangemouth and security of supply for fuel and gas uh, in the coming weeks as a result of repairs required? And what liaison has there been with the UK government regarding security of supply? Minister. 
Um, well, it's certainly to reassure Mr Macdonald, and I, I sort of welcome his own involvement as a local constituency member in, in, in taking interest in the welfare of those working at the uh, Grangemouth plant. Um, as I understand it, as I said in my original answer, that the, the company have uh, contingency plans to be able to ensure they have sufficient crude oil to be able to continue operations at, uh, at Grangemouth and they don't anticipate it affecting production. However, they have also got plans in place to ensure if that uh, does arise that they can access um, the, the finished product as well to make sure there's no disruption to fuel supplies within the Scottish or uh, North and Northern England uh, markets as well. So uh, I think the company are taking appropriate steps in that respect. In terms of environmental protection, we believe the issue has been contained, um, that they have identified what faults uh, are there and are identifying now a solution to repair the fault. Uh, and we have every confidence that any of us are working extremely hard on that at this moment in time. Um, the, the member also asked about engagement with UK government. At uh, this moment in time, the, the engagement has been at official to official level, um, but if necessary, obviously, we'd be keen to engage with UK ministers in this, where obviously there are key, key reserve powers in relation to um, oil and gas industry and indeed in security of supplies of energy are also a reserve matter. So we'll be keen to work uh, collaboratively with UK ministers if that uh, proves necessary. Lewis MacDonald. I wonder if uh, the Minister can tell us whether the Government has been enough informed about any oil which may have been in the pipeline system, uh, particularly above the site of the repair, before it was, cracked, uh, before it was closed down overnight. Uh, what has been done or will be done to remove that oil from the pipeline uh, and make it safe? And also, what are the financial and commercial and operational implications of this shutdown for operating companies producing that oil, the owners of that oil and other operating companies reliant on the infrastructure and by extension what are the cash flow implications uh, for companies in the supply chain in the North East and across Scotland. Minister. Well, clearly, I recognise a number of important issues that are raised by uh, Lewis MacDonald. Um, the pipeline's average daily throughput is just under uh, 450,000 barrels of oil a day and 3,500 tonnes of gas. I should stress that we uh, had reassurance there doesn't appear to be any threat to gas supplies um, from St Fergus Terminal. We'll still, still be able to supply gas to the national grid, so there aren't any immediate threats to um, uh, domestic heating supplies and other, other users of gas. However, clearly, um, such a loss of, uh, of throughput uh, is of an impact, potential impact to um, those companies who are affected by this and that's what we're hoping that uh, Oil and Gas UK will be able to assist us with uh, providing in confidence data to us um, uh, in the course of the day as to the impacts on particular companies that are affected by this because we are keen uh, to ensure that we protect uh, the workforce of those uh, involved in production on the platforms that have been affected by the 40s pipeline system uh, shutdown um, from uh, having any impact on a difficult time for the sector already having any further exacerbating effect on employment or profitability in those companies. Stuart Stevenson. Um, does the Minister have any knowledge of the nature of the problem that's occurred in the pipeline, but more fundamentally how the information about that failure may be shared with other pipeline operators to ensure that we have the best possible chance of this being a one-off? Minister. I, th I think Mr Stevenson makes a very reasonable point in terms of making sure we learn lessons from this, uh, clearly to, and to relay any, uh, any issues around good practice to, uh, to other uh, pipeline operators as swiftly as can be done. Obviously, Health and Safety uh, Executive is, is not a devolved agency, but I, I'm sure that uh, Health and Safety Executive were taking a very keen interest in this to ensure that there, anything can be done to prevent a similar um, risk to safety uh, being incurred in, in future. Uh, so that is something that uh, very much we, we need to take forward. Um, it does appear to be um, obviously a, a crack, a breach in the pipe. Um, as yet, we do not have a confirmed cause of that uh, failure, and that the, goes to the heart of what I think uh, Mr Rumbles was also saying in relation to um, the cause of this, as to understand whether it's uh, uh, something like metal fatigue or some other cause, or whether it's uh, maybe something that's externally um, damaged the pipe um, and therefore caused the, the crack. So as yet, we don't have an answer to that question, but certainly uh, commit to furnish those answers to, to members in the chamber with interest uh, once we have that identified, presiding officer. And finally, Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. Lewis Macdonald's already asked questions around the commercial impact, so I won't repeat them, but does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the temporary shutting down of the 40s pipeline and the attendant implications of this has highlighted what all of those who live in the North East and those working in the North Sea already know, and that is the huge importance of Scotland's North Sea oil reserves to the UK economy? Minister. 
I think it, uh, it's a very valid point. I mean, clearly, uh, we all, I think, recognise that, that the oil and gas industry is extremely important to the Scottish economy. But at times like this, uh, you also realise that, A, it's a dangerous occupation in some parts of the some, some parts of the job, and we've seen, not least in, in the northeast in the past, the, the tragic loss of life in Piper Alpha. But this is obviously on, on, on land, and there's uh, been damage to a uh, key pipeline here. But it also illustrates just how important the northeast and Scotland is uh, to providing energy needs, not just of, of Scotland, but of course the whole UK in terms of oil and gas, critical oil and gas supplies. And uh, clearly, uh, there's a very strong imperative on the part of all agencies to making sure that the Forties pipeline system is back up and running again and doing the job it's been doing. Uh, for many years now to help uh, supply us with our primary energy needs, uh, which it's, um, it's very much doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and we do often take that for granted. Thank you, uh, Minister and members. That concludes our urgent question. We now move on to topical questions. Question one from Lee MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the recent reports from HM, uh, HMIC 